Hello everyone, uh, welcome. Let me just finish a couple of setups right here. A couple of things that we normally do, like our music. And uh, we'll be right there. Uh, I changed the setup slightly, so now my other screen is down here. That's why I'm looking over here. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to be looking at the chat down here as well. So we got Palakurthi Siddhartha says, Hi bro, how are you and what is the word in your language? A good morning. Uh, buenos dias. In Spanish we say buenos dias. It's, uh, and bro, are you a pro that was teaching Unreal Engine? No, I'm not a pro really in Unreal Engine. I am proficient at it, but I wouldn't call myself a pro to be honest. I mean, well, it depends um, what you mean by like pro. Like I, I, I know the basics of uh, like uh, all the texturing things, modeling, stuff like that. Uh, but for programming now, I, I I just know the very, very basic things about programming. Let's open our mermaid over here. Go. Today, I think we're going to be doing the hands. We definitely need to do the hands for her. Let's see. Hey. Hey. My dog likes to... Um, My dog likes to chew on things, and I have a wooden table over here in his. She loves to make a mess with that one, right? Here we go. We got Amin, Amit Patel. Good morning, Aryan. Good morning, Aryan, and Icy Film. Hello, teacher. How was your weekend? Um, yeah, it was good. It was a good weekend overall. I would say, not complaining, <laughs> not complaining at all. So yeah, cool. How are you guys doing? How are things over there? I'm gonna take a couple of sips here for my coffee. And we're gonna get to it. So, uh, today we're gonna be focusing on the hands. Still a long ways to go with this one. Initially, I wanted I wanted to... What's the word? I wanted to, to like finish this for, for Mermaid, which was like the prompt uh, last week. But uh, unfortunately, you know, work gets in the way, life gets in the way. So, so we need to adjust and adapt. Um, but I'm gonna keep this as a personal project and, and we're just gonna finish it because I, I definitely wanna finish um, this sculpture right here. I've never done a, a like a female mermaid, like a realistic, well not realistic, like human uh, mermaid. I've done a, a monster mermaid a while ago for one of my classes. So I thought it would be a good idea to, to do one right here. So we're going to do the hands today and I want to show you a slightly different way in which we can construct the hands for uh, for our character, okay? So um, normally there, there's a couple of ways. People, so Some people like to just like literally use the move brush and start like creating the hands like this. But I find that method to be a little bit messy and that you don't get like the exact same sort of uh, proportions on, on all of the different parts of the hand. So I, I particularly don't don't like it as much. Another option is if we go here to the tools, for instance, we do have like this female C tool that we could use. We also have a mannequins and I do believe there's a hand mannequin. Yeah, we got this human hand mannequin, which is not bad. Uh, but at the same time, I, I don't uh, I don't love it. I, I usually prefer to keep things a little bit uh, simpler. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be working on a separate subtool. I'm going to say I'm going to go for a cube. There we go. I'm going to make this a poly mesh 3D and we're, we're going to be doing the hand like, uh, like facing forward. So let me open paint real quick and let me explore or explain a couple of things here. Georgie, what's up, my friend? Ramesh, welcome. Welcome. So hands, I remember when, when I was a student, um, Hands were always tricky, right? Like they're always tricky. Hands, feet and faces are always like the most complicated things. And the reason why they're very complicated is I would say due to two main like factors. The first one is the fact that there's a lot of detail, right? Like on the chest area, you just have this big chest, the big bones or the muscles and stuff. And, and it, it's easy to understand. On the hands, there's a lot of intricacy, a lot of like details and stuff. Same for the face, same for the feet. 
But the other thing that's really, really like um, confusing about hands is the perspective, right? So we know that uh, things in the real world, to make things in the real world look a little bit better in the in the two D world, we use tricks such as this, right? Like a like a perspective trick to to make things go into certain directions. And the thing is, hands are always in perspective. We have we have five cylinders pretty much, one for each finger, and one box on the hand that have a perspective. So if we take a look at a hand from like a like a front view. The best way that you can start like doing hands is by simplifying elements. So I'm gonna start by doing a cube right here. Okay. Let me make this smaller. I wanna try something. Let me go into Photoshop. I wanna see if they fix the um, the drawing bug that they had before. What's up, Roma? Welcome, my friend. Welcome to the stream. So let me. Oh, by the way, did you guys see the new video from today? This is the new video for today. This is the thumbnail. I teach you guys how to do a dirty glass effect inside of um, inside of Arnold, and I think it's really good. It's uh, it took me like forty minutes to explain the whole process because it's really really complex. But we can get this very cool photorealistic uh, results uh, quite easily. I would say like it's not that complicated, and we get something that looks really really interesting. So if you're doing this or like uh, like potions or like a, like a bar or something, and you want to use this glass technique. Make sure to check the video from today. So let's open a new file right here. There we go. And let me check my brush. There we go. Okay. So when we draw a hand, one of the ways that I like to draw a hand is by doing a square. Okay. That's the palm of the hand. And then at the side of the hand, you're going to do a little like trapezius thing or like a, like a very simple, uh, like, extrusion to the side that is this bone right here and whenever I, I, I teach anatomy which by the way it's a course that we're planning very very soon um, whenever we teach anatomy or I teach anatomy I like to explain the basic shapes and then the bones and then the actual anatomy right so for the hand if you take a look at the hand we have the wrist bones right here, which are called, are called the carpal bones. Uh, that's why when you get hurt and you get carpal tunnel uh, syndrome, you it, it hurts right here. So we got the carpal bones right around here. And then from the carpal bones, we got five metacarpals. So the word meta, right? The word meta, uh, it, it has a lot of meanings depending on, on which situation or context you're using it. But in the in the Greek like root or the Latin root, I'm not sure if it's Greek or Latin. It means after or or beyond, right? So so metacarpals are the bones that are beyond the carpals. That's why they're called metacarpals. So we have five metacarpals, which are these bones right here that go towards the fingers. And then the fingers themselves, they have three bones each. On in the case of the of the four fingers right here, and the thumb only has two. So the way that we do this, this right here would consider, or I would consider this to be the metacarpal, okay? This part right here is the metacarpal. And then from that metacarpal, we're gonna have the actual thumb, like this. And we're gonna have the fingers as well, like this. Now the fingers, they do something really interesting. They, they kind of like come together. They're not perfectly straight. We do sculpt them perfectly straight, or we try to give them a little bit of space so that the bakes uh, work very nicely on the characters, but they tend to be like a bit, a little bit of like spread further apart, right? But when you draw a hand like close like this, you can see that all of the fingers kind of like go towards each other and then create this very interesting effect. So um, there was a teacher that I studied from. His name is uh, Ray Bustos. And he's a great anatomy teacher and he explains that when you're drawing hands if you can find these two shapes you're gonna be like way 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 better and of course then each of these fingers is gonna be divided into two and that's gonna be the four fingers that we need now when you take a look at the finger a single finger like this one of the things that you're gonna notice is that on the top the fingers tend to be very flat and on the bottom they tend to create like the little um like uh, puffy like cushions that we have right here so that we can hold things and it doesn't hurt so fingers tend to have this sort of effect. But another thing that happens with fingers is that we have the knuckles. So we're gonna have this sort of like little mountains right here that are gonna create the knuckles. Now, I normally never, ever, ever model my fingers straight like this, because when you do this and you try to rig a character with the fingers like this, it's very difficult to bend the finger all the way until it curls up perfectly. So nowadays, I'm not gonna say every single studio, but a lot of studios nowadays, what they will do is they will model the fingers in such a way that you have a little bit of a bend on the on the actual elements. 
That way, with that little bend, you make it a lot easier to curl the whole finger in your rigging and also to extend it all the way forward. So it's just a way to um, to simplify the way we uh, we do things in rigging. So this is going to be the cube. This is going to be my palm. So I'm just going to make it a little bit thinner like that. Make it a little bit bigger like that. And then I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to scale it to create the sort of shape that we would expect for the matte tarsal. So this shape right here that we have, that's the shape that we're uh, like capturing, right? And when we do this, as you can see, oh, it's not. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna dynamesh this. Let's make sure to give it a H thing a polygroup. There we go. And I'm gonna rotate this. So I'm gonna rotate this in 90 degrees so that it's facing forward. There we go. So if we go to the top view, you can see that the face or the hand is facing forward. It's kind of like seeing this thing right here. Now for the fingers, I'm gonna append a new uh, cube. I make this cube really, really thin. Get it close to the shape of the finger, right around there. And as you can see, this is gonna give me a really nice uh, construction. Now the first phalange of the finger is gonna be right around there. And then I'm going to duplicate this, make it a little bit shorter and rotate it a little bit. And then duplicate it again, make it a little bit shorter, also a little bit thinner and rotate it a little bit. Because as, as, the, as the fingers move forward, one of the things that we would expect them to, um, or one of the things that we would expect to happen is for them to become smaller as well. I'm going to make this whole thing a little bit shorter. I think it was a little bit too long. Usually the size of the fingers like the size of the finger matches the size of the palm. It's very, very similar. So I'm gonna play a little bit with this guys right here. And of course, female hands, we tend to make them even like skinnier or even like simpler to uh, to accommodate for that sort of stuff. Let me move the pivot point down here. Again, so it's a little bit easier to manage. We're gonna press Control W to make sure that there's no like weird polygroups right here. And we're gonna dynamic. Give me one second, it's getting a little bit hot in here. I'll I'll turn on my fan. There we go. By the way, the map is still in the works, my friends. So if you guys are visiting from a country that we have not scratched from the map, let me know and we will scratch it off. My goal is to get a student from every single part of the world. Arian says, it'll take two minutes only. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, okay, but yeah, we can make this relatively fast. Okay, I'm going to use clay build up here. And I'm going to go to this piece. I'm going to turn on local symmetry. So that, we, um, so that we we should be getting local symmetry here. Hey, oh, uh, let's press X, of course. There we go. We can press X and we press uh, local symmetry so that we can be working on both sides of the finger. The first thing I like to do with my fingers is I like to give them a bevel. So I'm going to bevel the whole thing right here because otherwise this cube like shape is really, really, really intense, really aggressive. I don't love it. And we're going to soften with smooth all of this like tip of the finger right there. Now again, female hands, they tend to be a little bit more, you know, feminine. So the shape should be a little bit sharper, a little bit smoother, something like this. I'm just going to give them the the nice, ooh, the sort of like nice um, shape right there. There we go. After that, over here, we are going to have a little bit of a knuckle. I personally like to use again trim dynamic to to blend this thing and create a sort of uh, like a strong position right here on the finger. I'm not sure if we're gonna be adding nails. A lot of this is like um, stylized cartoon characters they don't have nails, just like sausage fingers. Let's fill in that gap right there. There we go. And then let's start cleaning all of these things right here. I'm gonna use Damien Standard here. To, to divide or, or separate the forward facing part of the of this finger and also this line right here 
Now, of course, this guy we need to fill it just a little bit. Usually, the the most volume we're gonna have is gonna be towards the center of the of the finger. There we go. And then, as we get to the the little crevice, we're actually gonna remove a little bit of volume from there. There we go. Same thing here. We add a little bit of volume. And we just smooth and again it, it depends a lot on the style like i've seen some um uh like animated movies and, and cartoons where the fingers are very 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 simple they're pretty much just like sausages uh it it, it, it always depends on the kind of like style that you want to go for mine is going to be a little bit realistic but not super realistic so there we go now let's check the size i think the size is fine I think we definitely need the nail. So for the nail, one thing that we can do is we can just mask out the nail right there. And then the very quick, quick way is to just extrude the nail from the very like finger like that. And then just keep it together. The, the, of course, if we do the nail as a separate sub tool, we, we can get a little bit more detail. But for now, just to get a general idea of how this is going to look, I think this is a good uh, compromise. Let's definitely push the knuckle a little bit forward. And this is where we, when we start the polish process. So we are working with very, very little subdivision levels. So we might not be able to get as much detail. Hate that my dog steals things and then I don't even know what she's destroying. She's a puppy, so she doesn't know better. There we go. So get, we get this uh, finger right here. And then what we can do is uh, we can start duplicating this, right? So we can press Control Alt. Let's get rid of uh, symmetry. So Control Alt. This one I'm going to make slightly bigger because that's the, supposed to be the middle finger. So right around there. I'm going to mask this out. And one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to start spreading the fingers a little bit more. So this one right here. This is going to break symmetry, of course. So you only want to do this like at the very end there we go or you might want to keep like a copy of this finger well this one's gonna be pretty much the exact same size as the as the ring finger and sometimes another thing that you can do is you can start like like rotating them a little bit more because the when, when the hand is at rest you can see that the little finger falls a little bit more than than everything else so we get a, a slightly different result there as well Duplicate once more. It's gonna be the pinky finger, which is not that smaller than the rest of the fingers. The thing is, it it, it attaches itself a little bit lower. That's what what really changes the the whole connection. So there we go. You can see we got uh, four fingers right there. We're gonna go to the to the hand right here, and uh, once we have this hand selected, we're also gonna do a trimming. We're cleaning a little bit of the of the sections. We might need to modify this, make them a little, a little bit wider, get it right there. And we can go and say uh, merge, merge down. So that both elements are combined. And when we dynamesh, all of the elements should be combined right there. So now it's a matter of uh, filling in this blank right here. Or this is spaces, this is where we would expect to have the, the knuckles. And I do recommend when sculpting characters to keep a little bit of distance in between the fingers because for retopology if the fingers are really close together it becomes really really complicated to um to properly uh capture that part of the of the character so doing this thing right there is uh advisable keeping a little bit of space I, I, again later on in posing or in in rendering or whatever rigging you can uh, you can close the fingers back again I am going to add a little bit of volume there because uh, in between the fingers we got this sort of like webbing happening. So it's like a like a connection, like a like a tissue connection. Kind of like, I don't know, like dogs and their feet, or like web feet. So we have a little bit of webbing, very, very, very little, but there's a little bit of webbing there on the on the hand. 
So yeah, this is gonna give us a, a good base mesh. And now we can use our clay buildup to start building up the rest of the elements. So for instance, we can do a little bit of um, of the of the uh, cushion that we have here underneath the fingers. There's another cushion right here, which is where the thumb is. And then there's another cushion right here, which is where the pinky is. Let's see. Juan Jose Salazar Morales says, Why do you prefer making courses in English rather than in Spanish? Well, originally, Juan Jose, I was uh, hired uh, by Nextut. So I'm, uh, I'm an instructor here in Nextut. And most of the audience is either in India or in um, America, Russia, Ukraine. We got a little bit of everything. So the most universal language for our main audience is English. However, we are planning on releasing some Spanish courses for our Latin American friends and for everyone here in Mexico and uh, Spain. And um, I know English can be uh, a little bit tricky to learn. So if there's any particular course that you want, uh, Juan Jose, write it down right now there in the comments so that I know that that's one of the, the ones that people are looking for. And, uh, and I can start preparing for that one. But yeah, we will be offering Spanish courses uh, soon. They're gonna be probably like the intro to ZBrush and the intro to Maya courses, but they're gonna be in Spanish. It's, the, it's gonna be pretty much the exact same content, just with the explanation in Spanish so that um, Spanish speaking students can understand them uh, better. Let's dive in the mesh real quick. On here, on the on the back part of the palm, we don't want to be like perfectly flat. You can see that there's a little bit of uh, volume as well. So there we go. We're gonna add a little bit of volume here, representing like the tendons and all the things that we normally get from the from the hand. Now, this is one way to build a hand. Again, as I've mentioned, there's always like tons and tons of different ways. But I find this a, a, a relatively easy way to, to build the base mesh for the hand. That doesn't mean this is going to be the final hand. It's just a base mesh that we're going to be using. And once we get into the character or with the character, we're going to be adjusting it to make sure it fits the, the body, the arms, everything. It's just a little bit of string dynamic here. And there we go. Let's see. Korean. Oh, I would love to learn Korean, but unfortunately, I, I, I don't know absolutely anything about Korean. I had a Korean friend when we were at school. Uh, his name is uh, Song Lee. And uh, he became an animator. He's really good. Okay. So for the thumb, we're going to do a little bit more of a traditional process. So I'm literally just going to start dragging the thumb up, out. that the thumb is usually falling or it falls a little bit more than than the rest of the fingers it, it, it's got like a different uh, sort of um, direction as the red than the rest of the hand so yeah if I, I, I when I was in high school I also learned German but I've, I've forgotten pretty much everything I know about it I, I understand it a little bit I got my then was like a B2 certificate or, or B1 or something like that. It was like three years of German. It was it was decent. <laughs> I was decent at it, um, but I, I've never used it, so I forgot. If I had to learn another language. I want to learn either uh, Japanese, which I think is really cool, or maybe I've heard that. Well, Italian, Italian is also relatively easy because it's very similar to Spanish. I'm going to add uh, this sort of like triangles right here where the knuckles are. These are important because they give a little bit more volume to the, to the outer side or to the other shape of the, of the hand. And they're going to help me build a little bit more form. There we go. And then don't forget that we still have our move brush. So if we need to, to modify certain things, for instance, here, if we want to give a little bit of a knuckle to that finger, we can we can do it. I think this hand is looking a little bit too realistic. So we're probably going to be simplifying it quite a bit once we uh, like connect it to the character. Another thing that you can do is literally look at your hand, like move your hand to the side and, and look at it and see how it's uh, how it's behaving because that's a, an excellent way to um, 
to mimic the real world. I'm not using any reference right now, which is a slight mistake. I should be using something. I'm just doing everything from memory. And we, we all know that reference is very, very important. But since we have little time today, only one hour, I want to make use of as so much of this time as possible. Here, for instance, in between the, the index finger and the thumb, there's also like a little bit of webbing. Yeah, there we go. A little bit of string dynamic to polish some shapes up. And again, not perfect yet, but it's looking good. We get a nice proportion, like starting from absolutely nothing to this we get something that's uh, at least usable. But I can imagine this thing being on my character. And from here, we can start polishing and creating something a little bit better. Let's see. Um, Brian Roberts, I make mermaid tails for a living. Just starting learning super Oh, that's very cool. Do you mean like for cosplay? It's really interesting. Actually, cosplay is one of those things that's that's been on like my mind for a while. It's like, oh, I really want to try doing some cosplays, but uh, I've never done it. IC Film says, Teacher, I may ask a question, please. Is there a way to import camera angle from Maya to ZBrush? For example, like importing modeling with camera angle from, C from Maya to Substance Painter? Uh, to Substance Painter, I don't think so. I don't think you can import the camera to Substance Painter. At least I'm not aware of how to do that. Maybe you can. But it, it, the one thing that I know is that it needs to be done with FBX. So if you're going to be importing anything into Maya or anywhere else and you want to keep or save the camera, you need to do it in FBX format, which is like a universal format for, for this sort of softwares. So, yeah. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, Japanese. Yeah, Japanese will be pretty cool. Brian Roberts says, your videos have been so helpful. Thank you, my friend. Georgie says, are you the CEO of Next2? No, no, I'm not the CEO. Uh, the CEO is Nalin. Some of you guys may know him. He was uh, once the one that was in charge of doing the YouTube channels. He's the boss. Nalin is the boss. I'm the head of instructors, so I'm in charge of um, of uh, recruiting instructors, uh, of course, recording courses, uh, the YouTube channel, and uh, making sure that all of the instructors that are helping do the best job possible. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm up there, but I'm not the CEO. <laughs> um, Brian Roberts says, yes, definitely in the cosplay realm, they're usual used for swimming. I do lots of traditional sculpting and mold making. But hoping to learn super dude mold making even before cosplay mold making is like my next skill that i want to learn and i don't even know where to start i know for instance i'm gonna show you maybe you can help me <laughs> so you guys know i do 3d printing this is an alien i did a long time ago a while ago let me go full screen so that you guys can see it this is my own concept i'm like how could i make a freaking mold out of this well I would like to make a mold out of this and um, and then create like uh, replicas, right? Like uh, just like do a, a 10, 20, I don't know. But uh, I'm not sure what I need to do. I've done some research, research and there's this like pink silicone stuff. I'm not sure if that's the thing that I need to get and uh, and do the like the silicone molds out of. Uh, but there's not a lot of resources like that. I haven't seen like a specific tutorial about like mold making for like action figures and stuff like that. If you know of anything, let me know, because that's something that I'm really, really interested in, in learning. Okay, let's go with our Damien standard here, and let's just add a couple of lines where the division of the, of the thumb would be. The one right there, and one right around there. Again, we're going to stylize the hell out of this. Like, I, I actually want to do the sort of, like, League of Legends hands. They're very, very sharp, very, very, like, nice and clean. But right now, we, we needed to create this very intense uh, block out first before we could go uh, there. Cool. So, I'm going to import this to our mermaid. So we're going to go here to the mermaid. I'm going to say append. And we're going to append the hand right there. That will be like a left hand, so I'm gonna rotate the left hand and position it where it should be. Scale this as well. Probably gonna make it a little bit thinner there. 
And as you can see, it's not bad. Like, uh, it looks it looks okay. A little bit big, though. I think the fingers might be a little bit long as well, compared to her body, to her frame. But we're 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 close to the, to the like the position. This is definitely way too high. I'm gonna go to the arm right here. The arm of the mermaid. I'm gonna use train dynamic to to remove some of this volume. So we can create a, a more precise connection to the hand. Usually the hand, when you when you bring your hands down, I know you can't really see me, but they should land right around where the pockets would be. So that's how you're gonna know um, whether or not the, the arms are, are too long or, or too short. So there we go. And that gives us a, a hand right there. Let's grab this hand. I know right now they look like witch's hand or something. They look really, 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 like, I wouldn't say wrong, but they don't look as nice as, as I was expecting. But that's fine. I know proportion is what we're looking for. Still think they're a little bit too big. Again, female hands, usually, usually, not always, you want to make them uh, a little bit thinner. Now, here's a very cool trick about female hands. When, when you have the hand like this, if you if you make the hand go in, if you rotate the wrist slightly towards the inside like this, you look strong. It looks like a like a strong like arm. And if you do it the other way like this, it looks a little bit more uh, delicate. So this is something that dancers and, and ballet and all of these things do quite a bit. They 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 create this this very nice curve with the arm by rotating the, the wrist up. So that's one trick that you can use for your female characters. If you push the angle of the wrist out like this. Just a little bit, not too much, just a little bit. As you can see, it's like 5 or 10 degrees, not, not much. But if you push the angle like that, that's also going to help you like sell the sort of like feminine look that we're going for. So let's go with a mirror right there. And there we go. Now, of course, over here, we're going to have to do trim dynamic all of this to create that the breakup right there. And we can get this. We can start working now on that. So here's what that's what's gonna happen now. I'm gonna merge. I'm gonna bring my hands all the way to the top, and then I'm gonna say merge down so they're merged with the body. So when we combine with the body, the resolution, as you can see, of the hands becomes really, really, really low. But that's actually what I what I want because with a low resolution, I'm gonna be able to control the forms a little bit better. And now I can start focusing on. I can start. I can focus now on cleaning the shapes and making sure everything looks as nice as possible. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start cleaning the shapes, but I'm going to start cleaning the shapes from the shoulder or the way down because uh, we've mentioned this quite a bit for, for a long, we're well, not a long time, but like we've mentioned this frequently. When we're sculpting, we need to look at the context of what we're sculpting. So right now we see the whole piece. We can definitely see a lot of mistakes, right? But if we go to the face, which is one of the parts where we've been working quite a bit, it looks quite nice. Like we're getting there. We're getting to our desired effect. However, we cannot have like pretty hands if we don't have pretty shoulders, pretty like elbows, pretty like everything else. So, so we definitely need to start focusing a little bit more on the on the anatomy and on the shapes of this. And this is where again, like going for a little bit of um, of reference might not be a bad idea. Let's see if we have any any more questions over here. Uh, Jamaica, dude, Jace Cover, you just won the Jamaica scratch. Because I do not have Jamaica on my map, so I'm gonna scratch Jamaica off the map after we're done with the stream. Thank you for watching from there. Um, let's see. Yeah, I do feel I'm pretty sure you can do it in Zbrush. I've never done it. I've never used it to be honest, but I'm pretty sure you can export the camera. It has to do. I'm pretty sure it has to do with um, this section over here on their draw here's the camera and i think uh like you can open i'm not sure if this is not that's a file there has to be something here where you can here look uh like select camera store camera rename like there has to be some way in which you can get the camera in here so i've never done it but i'm pretty sure it's got to be here so if you just look on google like zbrush documentation uh, import fbx camera you should get something uh let's see uh, Brian says, Jess, silicon mold and cast with resin. Smooth on. The company has great tutorials. Thank you again for all your classes. No, thank you for the tip. I'll, I'll look for smooth on. That looks like a, like a good thing. 
Ben Motikan says, Hello, I just finished your Seabrush beginner course. Thank you so much for your toots. It was very clear and useful. Oh, you're welcome, my friend. I'm preparing the next one, by the way. I'm preparing a next uh, course for Seabrush. It's going to be called Mastering Seabrush 2023. And it's going to be like the continuation to the complete guide to Seabrush 2022. It's also going to be like a little bit beginner friendly. So if people are, are, are learning uh, Seabrush for the first time, but we're going to go way more in depth into the software. So it's going to be it's going to be fun. So let's look for stylized female concept art. I know we're not looking for mermaids specifically. I just want to look for a stylized female character so that we can take a look at how the arms are actually like created. For instance, this little girl right here looks very nice. I actually think it has like a very, very like clean uh, silhouette and shape. Look at this. This one's very good as well. And the arm, look at the arm. Look at how the curvature here of the shoulder, the bicep, the tricep. So what we want to do is we want to keep a, a simplified version or a simplified construction of the arms for our character, okay? So if we go to our character here real quick, I'm gonna start using my Damien standard to to scratch or to, to delimitate where the muscles are gonna be. So the first muscle that we have that's very important is of course the deltoid muscle that goes in this direction right here. Now we're gonna go back here and that's gonna be my muscle. So as you can see, what, what I want to see is, especially on this view right here, I want to see a little bit of, uh, of uh, separation from the deltoid going into the tricep. But by carving a little bit right there and then smoothing this thing right here, as you can see, we create this very, very nice clean curve that's going to give us a, a nice silhouette for the, for the character. So... Right there. Same thing here on the front. I'm probably gonna carve out a little bit of the of the bicep right here. So when we see the front, we see a little bit of a separation from the muscles themselves. We're gonna use trim dynamic. I'm gonna start flattening this a little bit. So I mentioned I wanna go a little bit stylized. So this is what they did for like um again it's it's League of Legends. What was the name? Arcane. If you look at the character design from Arcane, like Jinx and Vi and stuff, you can see that the way the shadow, um, the way that shadows interact with the bodies is really, really, really important. Give me one second, guys. So, for instance, Caitlyn right here, uh, strong character strong character not super buffed like by so so this allows us to as you can see appreciate the uh the different parts of her anatomy without going like super bulky but look at how like the the, the silhouette right there i'm actually going to copy this image let's go to photoshop so look at how sharp these lines are right there it's really small so we got a very sharp line right there and then right there, right? That's the kind of stuff that we're going for, okay? Like that sharp lines that we have here, here, and here, that's giving us a really, really strong read on the uh, on the muscles themselves. So I'm gonna use Stream Dynamic to start um, like polishing this. By the way, Daniel, uh, Daniel Da Costa, he, he made a, a, a recent tutorial for us, which is stylized character sculpting. It's, uh, I'm not sure if I have it here on the thumbnail. No, it's not here, but... Um, but yeah, is this live, King Dead? Yeah, this is live. This is live. So as you can see here, I can use the string dynamic to give a little bit more strength to the uh, to the to the deltoid without really like destroying anything else. I'm gonna use the same technique here on the bicep. The bicep is really important. Again, look at how we get the shadow right here on this area. So I'm gonna use Damon Standard to carve out. The bicep from that area and then trim dynamic to flatten it around like this okay and then we just like bevel or keep beveling the edges to create like a soft nice transition usually here on the on the arm we're gonna get this sort of like a b shape where the different muscles kind of like merge into one another they they inter like weave 
definitely gonna push this a little bit more. Gonna be very aggressive there with the Damien and Standard and then Smooth. And as you can see, that creates a really nice effect. I still think this arm is a little bit too buffed, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it back a little bit. And there we go. Now the bicep is very much like a like a loaf of bread. So we're gonna have a, a sort of like flat effect right here. And another flat effect right here. And that's gonna give me the sort of look that we're going for. There we go. As you can see, this is getting us a, a nicer result. I still wanna push the the deltoid like I, I don't want to have this like super smooth line you can see well in this one in this case it's a little bit difficult to see because she's got that like little armor piece but it's like a like a sharp line right there right so something like that on the back part here we're gonna have muscle that goes towards the front of the character like this and then all of this area we need to do smooth it out it's a very, very round part of the arms. This is called the extensor carpi radialis longus and the uh, breaker radialis. There are two muscles that create a, a lot of volume here on the, on the front. And the important thing about this one is they go really, really high. They go all the way into the arm, especially the breaker radialis. That's what it's called breaker radialis because it goes from the, from the arm, brachia the radius we're gonna have this one right there and when you see the the silhouette of the arm you're gonna see this like curvature right there from the side it's not gonna be as, as obvious or as visible but from the from the front you're gonna see a little bit more there we go on the inside we got the flexors so all of the muscles, and you can try this, like do this. It's, it's gonna look really weird, uh, but hopefully at least one person does this. If you grab your arm and you position two of your fingers right here, and you close your uh, your fingers like this, what's gonna happen is you're gonna feel how the muscles activate in this area right here. Because all of the muscles on the inside of the elbow, these are called the uh, flexors, okay? So they're all working to flex the uh, fingers. And if you go to the other side right here, when you move the, uh, the fingers out, you're gonna feel how they activate so again hopefully someone is doing that but you can actually touch the flexors and the extensors and feel how they how they activate when we're flexing and extending our fingers a very good way to learn anatomy is to like visualize it and feel it and there's a lot of bones and muscles that you can feel on your body to um to understand properly how like all of these things work there we go as you can see this is working quite nice here the the arm is looking a lot nicer on the back right here, we're gonna have the elbow. Right around here. That's the elbow. I like to use, again, trim dynamic to sharpen this elbow a little bit. By the way, a lot of this female anatomy, uh, if you guys want to delve a little bit deeper, the, the newest course that I released is the um, the sci-fi uh, sci character creation and um, uh, volume one and that one we go over female anatomy quite a bit so if you want to check it out it's also available in, in udemy or in skillshare whichever ones uh, whichever one you prefer by the way guys let me know in the comments i, I want to do i'll do a a quick a quick um poll what do you prefer the first one is going to be lives or videos. I want to I want to see the um I want to see the response. Cuz I've been doing a lot of lives lately, but I'm not sure if uh, if that's a good idea. Maybe you guys prefer some uh, more videos. So here we're going to have a line that goes from the elbow all the way to the bone that gets in the in the pinky finger that bone's gonna be right around here then we got of course our our wrist all of that's gonna be smoothed out because there's a lot of muscles and things that hide that sort of stuff now there's just a little bit of string dynamic here to um to 
like blend the, the arm a little bit more. There we go. We're gonna go. On. We're going for a very very thin arm as we go towards the wrists. Still feels a little bit long, to be honest. Does feel a little bit long. So one of the things that I definitely should do is push the hands a little bit higher up. So here's how we can fix that very very easily. I'm just gonna grab the hands right here, and then move the put point right there, and just move them up a little bit and make sure that they match with the rest of the, of the body there we go that looks a little bit better and then of course we uh, dynamish and we need to, to fix this area right here there we go Oh, neither now they look way way too short way too short okay so no big deal first of all i think one of the things that looks short is the arms so i'm going to make the arms a little bit longer that looks a little bit better and now we need to remove the hands as well so i'm just gonna again mask them out and just like stretch the arm a little bit more We're losing, we're not losing, but we're destroying a little bit of the proportions here. But again, nothing that we shouldn't be able to, to fix. This is one of the things that I struggle quite a bit with uh, with the videos. When I'm recording videos, I can't record all of this because it's very boring to see <laughs> to see people make mistakes, right? You want to see like the, the cool result from the from the very beginning. But that, I, I, I've tried doing like the time lapse thing where, where you just like talk over what you're doing. And, and I, I don't find those videos to be as clear because you don't really know what's happening. Like the artist does tell you a couple of tricks here and there, but you don't like see the whole thought process. I always thought even though it might be a little bit more time watching the full process, but I've always thought it's a, it's a little bit more valuable. Oh, it's very 50-50, our poll. It's 57... 57% lives. I'm guessing 43% videos. I, I'm not seeing it, that's why I'm, I'm not sure. Push the bicep just a little bit further up. Let's push the elbow back. There we go. So right now, silhouette is what we're focusing on, or what we should be focusing on. Okay. Now here, the wrist is always one of those areas that I, I personally struggle quite a bit with the with the wrist. So I never know how deep to like carve the the wrist thing here. I want to go for silhouette, so a lot of move brush, a lot of trim dynamic, a lot of smooth, especially for this kind of characters that are very stylized. Definitely want to go for silhouette. So right now, instead of actually looking at the arm, I'm looking at the shadow here, like the dark like outline, because that's telling me where where things should or should not be. there's a little bit of volume here on the wrist I personally like to add so I'm gonna add that volume right there let's finish the pole let's see yeah so live 555 videos 44 well I will keep it half and half then for the for the next couple of weeks um, let's say Austin Harry, hello my friend. Roma says like both weeks, but recently don't have time to watch lives. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, Vishal says lives because we can see them later anyway. Also, we get to see the real time creation and all that goes into making an art. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I like about lives uh, as well. But I, I understand uh, Roma, for instance, saying that lives usually are a little bit longer, so you don't see like the condensed information. 
and it's like learning from the process rather than the exact uh, technique don't worry we'll keep we'll keep doing a little bit of everything i think tomorrow we're gonna go back to um to the um, lighthouse I haven't done that one in a while i'm gonna, I'm gonna bring the i think the wrist is getting a little bit too thin right there There we go. If we need to tweak the thumb right here, and now we can start like thinking about the stylization of the um, of the actual hand. So let me hide the fingers for now. I find them a little bit distracting right now, and let's focus on this thumb right here. So when we and I've seen this quite a bit in like cartoon. So cartoon hands stylized. There we go. You can see this very like intense effect. And we can go for like female. We get like cleaner hands. So yeah, like this one right here. So as you can see, we got some very, very sharp effects on, on different parts of the of the character. And I think that looks really cool. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna follow that sort of like shape. And create the, the little pad that we would expect here on the thumb and then the thumb would get like the like the ridge right there i'm using them in a standard with like the negative option with alt to generate a a sharper effect i like the knuckle and then the other knuckle would be right around there now when we see it from the from the front or from the bottom Definitely need to take care of the silhouette a little bit more. Gonna use play build up. There we go. And there we go. So you can see this really, really cleans up the silhouette. And again, I, I don't want to do like a lot of detail right now because we don't have the, the topology to do so. When we jump into the details, we should be able to add a little bit more precision but this sort of like characters they tend to be very minimalistic so that looks really good that thumb right there i really like how that one looks yeah let's just just move brush here to accommodate a little bit of this here and there and you can see how just by using the move brush and, and creating this silhouette changes we're already describing very nicely the form of this uh of this thumb right but it does take it does take a little bit of time here and there um vishal says is this gender identity politics going on in your area as well no not too much to be honest mexico has been very um it's very traditional as well so they're not very open to a lot of the things that are happening in the world right now. Um, they're 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 barely allowing like uh, like um, um, gay marriage and stuff. Like in the state where I'm in, gay marriage is, is allowed, but it's uh, no like Mexico is not not as intense right now with that thing. But I'm I'm sure it's gonna happen eventually, and unfortunately, because. Um, we're all people like there's no need to be so hateful i would say i don't want to get into into those sort of debates but i'm i'm all for for those rights so um also hey abraham i was just wondering if you saw the photos i sent in the discord server i'm not sure i'm not sure which ones you mean let me check i probably saw some of them was that the, the thyros result if it was the thyros result then uh, i did see them yeah i'm not seeing them yeah mexico it's a it's a fun country i mean i love my country <laughs> uh but yeah there, there's a lot of things i there's a lot of things i hate about mexico like politics right now yesterday there was the elections and dude like like there, there's no good candidate do you know what i mean like all of them are doing like corruption and uh 
money laundering and things like that. So unfortunately, there's no good option for for the for the citizens. They 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 steal money. They um, collude with the criminals and with like the drug dealers. It's it's horrible, man. It's horrible. I'm guessing. Like I, I'm I'm quite up to date with like uh, American culture because I have a lot of friends in in the United States. So I know that they they also have and struggle with a lot of that sort of stuff. So yeah, it's uh, it's unfortunate. But yeah, Mexico. I think Mexico and India we, we share a lot of things culturally uh, in common. Okay. So now we might need to redo the fingers, and let me show you what we can do here. So I'm gonna select Control Alt and select Lasso, and I'm gonna select all of these fingers right there, and I'm gonna delete Hidden. So we're only left with one finger. And if we can make sure that this finger looks really, really good, then when we duplicate and create the rest of the fingers, they're going to look really good as well. So I'm going to follow a very similar like approach to what I'm seeing right here. It's kind of weird though, because this one, as you can see, it's kind of like just two lines, which is weird. But uh, I think go with this again, this very strong like line here on the knuckle. definitely need to make the finger a little bit bigger so I'm gonna go with inflate and inflate the finger right now it looks like a like ugly sausage but we're gonna start polishing it actually with trim dynamic and generating the silhouette um let's see i send them in the whip the lamp and the fountain pen whips oh there you go okay yeah so the lamp looks really good i like this one i think the gold is a little bit too perfect like you you normally will have a little bit of roughness or, or stuff like that on the on the gold, it's very, very difficult to have a, a super new gold. So I would add like a couple more scratches to just reduce the roughness a little bit more. But it looks good. It's a nice model. And the fountain pen, again, the, the metals are not looking great. And I think this is a render from Substance Painter. You definitely want to bring this into Maya and create like a little scene for it. Uh, again, the model, it's a simple model, right? But uh, even a simple model can create a nice render. But we need to do a nice render. So nice lights and nice render. It's going to be real cool. Yeah, the the eye ray from substances is really bad, man. It's a, it's like kind of like a marmoset thing, and I'm not saying marmoset is bad. Or it's not that it's bad. It's just it's not gonna give you a, a realistic sort of like cinematic uh, look, right? So, so if you can, or not if you can, you should definitely always have like a like I have my own render scene uh, already set up inside of Maya, and every time I need to render something, I just go to that scene, and that way I save myself quite a bit of time, and. Um, and, uh, and we get nice, nice renders. It's the, the very basic, like, three-point light setup that I've used a hundred times. I use that one for my... For my particular effect. Okay. So that one looks good. I think it's the finger here. That needs a little bit of help. I'm gonna grab this part right here. And I'm gonna rotate... I'm gonna rotate the finger just a little bit so that we get the sort of like length that we're going for. There we go. That looks a little bit better. I think we're a little bit too thin here and there. And I wanna try to straighten this to, to keep like a center line for the finger. That finger looks a little bit better than what we had. Definitely see, I can definitely see here. Here's another trick. I'm gonna mask out this area right here. And then with move brush, I'm gonna push this up. That's gonna create a, a little bit of a division right there. I definitely, definitely need more resolution. Like I'm working with really, really low resolution. And this is affecting the result that we're we're expecting to get right here. So. But from um, 
from a visual perspective that finger looks way way better than what we had before so i think we're we're moving in a, in a good direction let's see um Arian, yes, yes, sorry, Arian. I did see your message. I did see your message. Okay, let's check. Uh, I'm gonna check Arian's Arian's message real quick. Okay, so Arian is sending me a file to see if it's uh, if it's working. Let's take a look. We'll take a look at Arian's file, and with this, we're we're gonna be finishing the the live stream, my friends. So if there's any more questions, right now is the moment. Uh, Bishal says, I remember in one stream you said the number zero was invented by someone in your region, and here in India we have our uh, Vijayavyata who invented zero, so oh, we're gonna fight for that. <laughs> uh, well, it, it's a uh, that's a good question, actually. I, I heard that Mayans invented a zero. Um, so it says here, the first recorded zero appeared in Mesopotamia around 3 BC. The Mayans invented independently circa 4 AD. There we go. So, so you might be right. You might be right that it was invented over there in Mesopotamia in 3 BC. But uh, we Mayans also came up with the idea by ourselves. <laughs> well, I, I don't have Maya ancestors, so... But Mayans here in Mexico did do it as well. Um, I, I'm very interested in learning more about like the cultures from, from India. As far as I understand, I mean, India is a huge country, right? So, so you guys have like a lot of regions and a lot of uh, different uh, environments as well. Like, I believe you have like deserts and snow mountains and uh, and of course beaches and uh, forests. So it's, it's interesting to learn from so many cultures. I need to study a little bit more about Indian history. You guys have great chess players. That's what I can say. Great, great chess players. I'm um, trying to see if the size of the finger looks good. I think it does look good. Looks a little bit pointy. Okay, so this is the model that Aryan was working on. It's like a camcorder. Okay, let's take a look at the wireframe. So whenever you're working with complex models like this one, the first thing people are going to look at is the wireframe. And uh, as far as I can tell, this wireframe looks okay. However, however, I am gonna go on a on a guess right here, and I'm gonna guess that you are using a little bit of uh, automatic remesher. And the reason I say that is because there's a lot of points right here. For instance, on this corners look really weird. Like this corners are, are this is easy topology right here. Like, you don't need all of this, uh, like, elements. So for instance, I can see that we have a nice edge loop right here. And then these things right here are, like, separate elements. And I'm not sure where you're keeping them as separate elements. Because that's giving you some... <laughs> oh, God. That's giving you some issues, so I will definitely fix those. Um, and, again, like, automatic retopology is not bad. But, uh, at least... Like for myself, I, I've, I've been using Maya for a long time, so it's very, very easy to see when automatic retopology is being used. So for instance, this one right here, it makes no sense to have an asymmetrical piece. And this is an asymmetrical piece, okay? So you can see this line right here, it's not going down the symmetry line. And uh, again, it, it makes no sense. Can you fix this? Yes, of course. This can be very easily fixed, uh, probably with like a mirror or something. But you definitely want to be very, very careful about... Uh, what is this? Oh, this is like a scope. It's not. It's not a camcorder. It's like a scope. So you you gotta be very very careful about your topology. Now you're going for a really really high topology. This is something that we might see inside of like films or or, or commercial work. And here's the important thing about those. Uh, again, I can see again automatic retopology. It's very it's very obvious when when retopology is is happening because you get this sort of like like smoothish like elements and it, it's not like perfect topology and. The problem with this is, as you can see, like right now, the whole scene is almost a million polygons and we're not even subdivided, right? And the problem is we cannot unsubdivide. Like most of these pieces, if I try to grab this guy right here, or wait, are you going to be doing bakes? Oh, it looks like you're going to be doing bakes. Okay, if you're going to be doing bakes, then you can ignore most of what I just said, because with bakes, um, things like high poly doesn't really matter how you get uh, how you get it. But for instance, this piece right here, again, it's really concerning to me that's not symmetrical. 
it kind of looks symmetrical, but it's not symmetrical. Or at least it's not rotated in a symmetrical like fashion. It should be like something around there. You gotta be very careful with those sort of things, my friend, because it's um it's a, it's an issue that you're gonna be encountering later on with bakes or with textures, and uh, you definitely want to keep things as clean as possible. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. so yeah, that's it, my friends. Uh, I'm gonna stop this stream right now. We let me just save this real quick. So we we managed to move not too much, but we managed to to fix a little bit of the arms, and we're finally getting into a cleaner hand. So I'm gonna just save this right here. And uh, we're probably gonna keep working on this in the next couple of times. If I see that we don't have as many like uh, views, because right now we are only above the 200 views, and sometimes we've gotten all the way to like 800 views, so maybe this topic is not as interesting. So we might do one more of this ones, and then I'll just finish it on my on my spare time. So I really want to finish this mermaid. I might use it to to relax and to just uh, uh, blow some steam off and, uh, and just like. Just have fun. Uh, one of the things that I've, I've, I've realized in the last couple of years is that I'm doing a lot of 3D like for work, and it's fine, right? Because it's it's it's, it's fun uh, either way. But I haven't done a lot of 3D for like actual fun, fun. So yeah, uh, that's something that I definitely need to work on. So yeah, that's pretty much it, my friends. Miranda Walsey, thank you so much for all your work. I just sub, and I'm in love with this channel. Keep it up. Thank you, thank you. Uh, welcome to the channel. We also have a Discord if you want to join. It's uh, it's there in the description. And uh, we also answer questions over there as well. So, well, that's it, my friends. I'm going to stop this one right here. I'm going to go and do some work. And I'm going to start recording some of the next premium courses. So, that's it for now, my friends. Hang on tight. And I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.